Last week, somebody from a generic Premier League football website dropped me an email and said, can I give you a call to discuss the West Ham captaincy? He was writing an article. He said, can I just sort of ask a few details? He's got an overview of all Premier League stuff, but he doesn't know sort of everything about individual clubs. So he said, can I give you a call to talk about the West Ham captaincy? I said, sure. So gave me a call. And he said, I'm just trying to figure out who will be West Ham's captain next season. Just wanted to run through a few names. It was quite a funny way to do it because he already had a list, list of names in front of him, which he was just to then throw out of me. He could, have, he could ask my opinion at the start. But he turned around and he said, yeah, he said, so I'm thinking Jared Bowen. And I said, no, no, too too quiet, far too quiet. And he said, really? I said, yeah, he's, very, he's unassuming. He's he's very, very quiet. He's 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 not a leader. He's timid. He's, he, there's no leadership qualities about him that I can see. That's not, that's not to say he's not driven, he's not determined, but as a leader, no, I don't think so. And just to put into context, I never agreed with David Beckham being, um, being, being a captain, being captain of England. I think he was captain of England because of his reputation. Fine player, but he's very, very quiet. I think you've got to be dominant. You've got to be dominant in the dressing room. You've got to be the, um, well, the manager's coach on the pitch as well. You've got to be really able to encourage people and also, I think, you know, probably tell them off if not not doing too well as well. I mean, you know, Players that stick in my mind when I'm looking at, well, uh, uh, forget Billy Bonds for a second, in more because not, not everyone's going to remember Billy Bonds, maybe in Premier League terms, you, you would think Roy Keane or Tony Adams or some, you know, very, very vocal captains. At the moment, I look at somebody like Tyro Mings, and I've done for quite some time. He, he is a captain. He's extremely vocal. Um, and I think that, that's what, you know, so anyway, he's running through. And I said, no, no, I don't, and for those reasons, I didn't think uh, Jared Bowen at all. And he said, well, what about Antonio? I said, well, no, I don't think so. I said, well, you're probably the wrong age dynamic as well um, to do that. I said, we already rely far too much on Antonio. We don't want to sort of give him even more responsibility and, and make him the captain. So we're running free. He said, uh, Flynn Downs? No, not Flynn Downs. I said, he said, I said why not? I said, well, I don't know if he, we don't know if he's going to be in the team. And I think that's the thing. The captain has got to be someone that's in the team. Otherwise, you know, you just give it to Ogbonna, wouldn't you? But Ogbonna, there's no point, let's be fair. He's not guaranteed his starting place in the team. And he's getting on a little bit in football in terms. Now, don't get me wrong. I'd be delighted to be as young as Ogbonna is, but you know what I mean? In, in football in terms, he's getting on. You can't bestow the captaincy upon him for a short period of time, really. So anyway, so we go, we're going through them all. The only one that I thought about was when he mentioned Sue Fowler. I said, oh, OK, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's got it. I don't know how good his English is particularly, but, because you are going to need that, you've got to be able to communicate. Oh, maybe, maybe, just maybe. Um, and once we'd finished talking about a girl who I'd sort of dismissed because well, he appears to have communication problems just with him and the goalkeeper, so I have to assume that's going to be the, the case with the rest of the team, even though he is a talker. There's, there's no doubt about it. Suchek, no, he's quiet, not guaranteed his place. Went through it and I didn't see any obvious, obvious captains. And, uh, and it just made me think, I think we're going to have to buy one. I think we're going to have to buy West Ham's next captain. Now, the funny thing is, after I'd, I'd had that conversation with him, uh, the sort of solution did um, was sort of given given to me in many respects um, in, in a link in an article with somebody we might want to part exchange for Declan Rice. But a captaincy is, is very, very important. I, I think Declan Rice has done a decent job. I, I think he's somewhere in between the two because he, he does have character. He does have personality. Um, but the thing is with Declan Rice, I always find Declan Rice sort of, like everyone's mate, isn't he? And I'm not sure you you can be. Mark Noble really learnt the art of captaincy. Kevin Nolan was a good captain for West Ham. I think Mark Noble really learnt the art of captaincy. But I think Mark Noble's probably got quite a a dominant personality anyway. I think you're gonna have to. You're gonna need. You're gonna need charisma. You need not need not to be afraid to speak in front of people. But. If any of you have seen like the Mark, uh, the Mark Noble documentary and things like that, look at him when he's going back to his old school. Look how confident he is. Look how chatty he is. Look at when he's speaking to his, his neighbours from the town he used to kick around, I think, the, the, the kick around with the twins or whatever it was. And they, they said, oh, no, he was always like this. He was always confident. And I think that's, that's really, really important. Listen to the story about when Mark Noble got into the car with Jesse Lingard. Um, and, Jesse Ling and Jesse Lingard started using his phone, and Mark Noble said, no, put that away. Put that away. We don't do that at West Ham. That takes a, um, that takes a level of confidence to do that with, with somebody else, particularly if you think of the dynamic there of Mark Noble in the car with Lingard at the time, whether you'd like or loathe Lingard, doesn't really matter. Point of the matter is, he had somebody who was doing really well for West Ham, 
who had come from Man United, a far bigger club than, than Mark Noble has ever played for, and somebody that had represented England, played for England at a World Cup. Again, St. Mark Noble, unfortunately, never, never did. So you would think, you know, in, in that sense, the authority would at that point be with Jesse Lingard. No, it wasn't. Mark Noble was club captain, and he told him what was what, and these are the rules, and this is what you'll do. And actually, he quite liked it, Lingard, because it was Lingard that told the story afterwards, and he was quite impressed with it. Uh, he spoke about Mark Noble's captaincy qualities because that's what you've got to do when you're a captain. It's, it's not just to cajole everyone and do the popular stuff and, and encourage them and give them a pat on the back. Sometimes you've got to tell people things uh, that aren't unpopular, but really importantly, you've got to motivate as well and you've got to motivate with the force of your personality. Uh, if, if any of you have seen, uh, if you Google um, Martin Johnson, uh, Keith Wood and Lawrence Delalio. It's I go on, on YouTube, but say their names. And it's from a British Lions tour. You'll you'll see captains, three captains, see three captains at their at their finest there. Um encouraging, motivating, in, inspirational stuff. I, I actually I think that team talk is so good. I think they've played it in offices on a Monday morning. <laughs> to motivate office staff ahead of their week at work and stuff like that. It's incredibly important that we get it right. And I think in many respects, we've we've made do. I, I don't think it was... I was going to say, I don't think it was a great choice to, to choose Declan, but I don't think they had any choice. I think that was it. I do think he is probably the man best suited for the job that was at West Ham at the time. But that doesn't mean to say I think he is ideally suited to the job. He was just the, the best suited to the job. Um... I think it wasn't great. Everyone knew that Declan was leaving. so uh, But I think he's done a good job. I don't think that impacted him. I think he's tried to do uh, what was best. But he is. You've seen him. Declan, Declan Rice is the joker. You'll, you'll see him there doing a dance, singing a song, doing a rap or whatever the case may be. Um, practical jokes. That, that, that's not... The, the captain would tend not to do that sort of stuff particularly. So I do think it's going to be have to be someone that we bring him in anyway. So I'm watching the... Um, Watching the news the other day and, and reading this down the other, and they start saying that Man City are going to be back in for Declan Rice. I think for a long time it was, well, for a long time it was Chelsea, and then this season it's been Arsenal. Talk's been Arsenal. A deal's been agreed with Arsenal, and 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 I think since, ironically enough, since West Ham played Arsenal, and then. Declan Rice played as well as he did, um, which you know is as responsible as any singular player, I think, for Arsenal not winning the um, not winning the title. It's when it sort of capitulated, wasn't it? A draw against us and a draw against Liverpool, and Declan Rice was was brilliant in that game. I think at that point and his form since then, almost every other club has sat up and taken notice. Maybe Man U were thinking, oh, hold on, if we can't get Frankie De Jong, maybe we want to go and get Declan. Um, Pochettino, you know, coming in at uh, Chelsea might, you know, apparently Chelsea and I think, hold on, we've got to go and get Declan. Now, obviously, Chelsea not going to have Champions League football. Whether they can make that work, I don't know. Uh, Liverpool were thinking, hold on, maybe, maybe we need to go and get Declan now. They, they for two for so long, they thought they were getting Jude Bellingham. Looks like he was going to Real Madrid. So I mean, that's another thing. I think there was a few clubs who thought they might be getting Jude Bellingham. What well, he ain't. Looks like Real Madrid are oh, at the point of recording this. I, I, my my information um, might be wrong. I've only read it in the papers and seen it on the telly. But um, and and then so Man City came in. A lot of people started coming in because I just think people started thinking, okay, we need to have this player. West Ham knew it, and that's why West Ham. Leaked the news. The price for Declan Rice is now 120 million. I don't think they think they're going to get 120 million, but I think they know if they ask for it, then they're probably more likely to get 100. But then that other little snippet came out. But we would be willing to do an exchange for certain players from Champions League teams. OK, oh, that, was, that was cryptic. I liked it. I like a bit of cryptic. Gives you some figuring out to do. So, as you know, I did a video about it. I started thinking through the, um, you know, the, the club. So, OK, so who would we take from them? Who would we take from Chelsea? I know they're not a Champions League club, you know what I'm saying. Who would we take from Arsenal? Who would, we, who would be of interest to us? And then, of course, it just hit me. I wasn't thinking about the captaincy thing at that point. And they said, Manchester City... Manchester City will not be prepared to pay the 120 million, but they would be willing to part with 70 million plus Calvin Phillips for Declan Rice. I thought, oh. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Calvin Phillips is a risk. I do think he's a risk. 
because he seems to be injured. He, at Leeds, he was injured. At Man City, he was injured. But I do think he is an excellent player. As good as Declan, no. But I, I, I don't think they're... I don't think I was watching uh, Real Madrid play uh, Man City actually um, in the semi-finals in the first leg, and I was I saw Tuchemeni play in that one. I've seen him play for France, but he was like, excellent for France. The rest of it. But I was watching him just in that Real Madrid game, and I looked. I thought, well, you, ain't, you ain't as good as Declan. Might be, hey, look, might, might be proved wrong on that. Who knows? But um, but I thought no. Now, so I don't think too many are as good as Declan. But Calvin Phillips, hell of a good player. Very, very good player. Versatile as well. But one of the things he is is a captain. He was the captain leads and he is quite vocal. And I do wonder if that will tick that box. I think there's reasons not to have him, but it reminds me of an old Mark Hughes saying. Well, Mark Hughes is going to go and sign a, a striker called Blockade Santa Cruz. You probably remember him. And, um, and Hughes said, I'd looked at him so many times before. He said, but I think sometimes, he said, we didn't sign him before. He said, but sometimes I think you look too closely at what a player can't do rather than what they can do. He said, so we forgot about the fact he didn't have any pace. And we just thought, actually, he's completely dominant in the air. He's got an absolute howitzer of a shot. Um, and he can pass the ball with his head. So they went for him. And I think he did, well, for a season at least, did, did really well. Anyway, it doesn't matter if it's Robbie, Rocky, Santa Cruz. I think sometimes you can, can look at what a player can't bring. And maybe, just maybe... That Calvin Phillips, even if he doesn't play 38 league games, he plays 30 instead of 38. Might be, might be a very good player. I'm undecided on it, by the way. I'm undecided on it. I don't know. I just found it very, very interesting. And I do wonder who is going to be able to identify this because I do think it's a problem. But I don't see loads of them around the Premier League. I really don't. So say, I saw... Um, so Ming's very, very vocal. Uh, Connor Cody, but I mean, he's, a great, he's not a great example. He's, he's hardly doing well. Everton, is he? Is he? But I mean, he's, he's got that sort of personality. He looks like it. I mean, again, Maguire. Maguire, Maguire might have been a captain, would have been a captain. Looks like he's had the stuff he knocks out of him, really. I'm not for one of those lead by example ones. Like Harry Kane, I don't like him as captain. I, I don't. I think he's quiet. I think he's unassuming. I don't particularly like striker being captain either. So the whole lead by example. Basically, you watch him. That's, that's the idea with lead by example, example, right? The same with um, David Beckham. Watch him. And then you get inspired by him. He's so good. Because he's so good, I can't let my standards slip below his. OK, I, I sort of get it. But it's not the same as being petrified of, of Roy Keane, is it? Him stabbing his finger in your, in your chest, threatening to, threatening, <laughs> threatening to slap you if you don't, um, if you don't sort yourself out. Reminding you, reminding you of your responsibilities. This is what is so good so good about if you go and look at some of these captaincy speeches from people like Martin Johnson and Lawrence Lallio and Keith Wood, they're reminding them, Keith Wood's reminding everyone now, their responsibility of playing for Ireland and you know, what it means to the people out there. Um, you know, same with Martin Johnson, you know, he's, he's telling people, you go out there and you, you go and do this for not only yourself, you do it for your family, you do it for, you do it for your, you know, that, that coach in school who took you through school, but most importantly, you do, I've seen him doing one for the, um, when he played for Leicester, you do it for the people of Leicester. And you do, I mean, these, these people say inspirational things and, and it's enough to motivate everybody else and get, whatever, get a few extra percent out of everyone. So I do think it's quite important, but I think, um, I think, the headline of this, basically, the underlining uh, point in this is I look around West Ham and I don't see that person. I, I just don't. I do not see that dominant personality. Yes, I was surprised during COVID. Ogbonna was far more vocal than I thought he was. COVID was interesting with the empty stadiums before they started like putting the, the fake noise in there, if you remember. I thought, yeah, OK. At that point, when it was silent, he found out. I was amazed how noisy our bench was. And I think that's got us through. Really noisy. And Moyes is really loud on there. Nolan was really loud. And then we had Pierce there as well, the three of them. They were, honestly, they were non-stop. Um, and I, I thought they were quite overwhelming, actually, with, with opposition benches. I wonder, you know, and I, I think that might take up a lot of slack from, you know, maybe if you don't have a loud captain or whatever, if, you, if you've got an your support staff. But, you know, best will in the world. I mean, you know, look, look at London Stadium. You're not going to hear, if you're on the pitch, you're not going to hear somebody shouting from the bench. I often wonder about David Moyes. I think, I can't hear you, mate, unless it's whatever, Sue Fowl, and he's running right in front of you. They won't be able to hear you on there. So the captain's all important. Anyway, be interested to know what you think.